Flat track itself is getting a lot more, um, I guess, credit for uh, the success of a lot of the, the young dirt trackers who are coming up through the ranks and becoming good road racers. The majority of them have the dirt track roots. Look at the attitude. That's Shana. He's just right through the inside. The fight is back, back again side by side up the hill. Edwards, it looked like carrying too much speed, but he's held it together. Final lap. We're on now. Led by Colin Edwards. At the moment, he has a championship. It's unbelievable stuff here at Imola. The last lap for Joy Bayless, the world champion. He leaves the series at the end of this year, and he did not fancy riding this last lap. Looking up, Colin Edwards, exhaust pipe, but he's not going to because he slips it through coming down into field now. Chicane, you might beat me for the championship. You're not going to beat me on the track. Down now in the toes, the corner hooks the left. Edwards just slides it down the inside, leaning on each other. This contact elbow to elbow, panel to panel. These guys are playing it. This is stunning stuff, and look at Bayliss, he's going to fight back into Piratel. He's going to knock the pair of them off in a minute, there's no doubt. Oh, amazing! Oh, this is it, that was it. Over across the top. That was the moment, that was the turning point. Uh, he's just got to get to this final corner, don't outbreak yourself now. Colin, just getting in there nicely, round this final corner, and he's done it. Colin Edwards is going to be world champion. Hey, Colin Edwards is the world champion. Believe it or not, at a faster pace, it actually happens slower. So whatever you learn on an XR100, which you know can happen pretty quick, you start to understand you can get away with murder with the front and the rear, and you know one little bobble is not going to send you down the road. You you start to understand both wheels working together, and something happens with the front where you just apply a bit of weight to the rear, or whatever, to to counteract what's going on. Whenever you're doing the speeds we're doing now, you have such force and you got speed and momentum and gyroscopic and you got everything going. It actually happens quite a bit slower as long as you're third, fourth, fifth gear. The second gear corners, okay, they can jump up and bite you in first gear, but you get a lot of load, a lot of force, and it tends to happen pretty slow and it's pretty comfortable. As far as ride next to 100 feet up, and that's some of the best practice as far as balance and learning how to drift both ends without putting your foot down. It was awesome. We're going to use the same track, the same track configuration, only this time you're going to do it with your feet on the pegs, all right? Scooters do every time he goes around the track, all the way around the track, he's going to keep his feet on the pegs. Now, if you do that and you have a tendency to lean in a little bit, keeping your feet on the pegs, you're going to be on the ground in a hurry. So the whole time he goes around the track, I've got you, he's going to keep his feet on the pegs. He's going to go into the corner, lean it over, keep that body on top of it, if he's going to the right, he's going to do the same thing. Keep that body on top of the motorcycle. Feet on the pegs. If you're leaning forward in the middle of the corner, you're going to be on your face in a hurry. You'll be down on the ground. All right, boys, good job. Nice and smooth. This drill forces you to be in the right body position. You can't get lazy by dragging your foot. Nice and smooth. Pushing it down. Feet up the whole time. Your feet up, JD! JD has a tendency to cheat a little bit when he does this drill because he's so little. He's cute as heck, though, isn't he? <laughs> Mr. JD Beach, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, come on, JD! Nice and smooth. You've got to make those transitions as smooth as possible. One, two, three, four. Driving it into the corner, squeezing that rear brake, slowing it down, change in direction, rolling the throttle on. One of the things you can use to know that you're in the right body position as you go into the corner is you're actually going to use this left arm kind of as a lean angle gauge. It's going to be like a little bit of a spring. As you lean the thing off into the inside of the corner, okay, you can see he just extends that inside arm. His inside arm is straight. If the scooter happened to lean off into the corner and then keep that elbow bent, he's going to bring that weight in. Next thing you know, he's on the ground. Okay, so You don't want to actually use that arm and straighten it and push your body away. You want to just push the bike down. okay. Keep that inside arm straight. Doesn't matter if he's going that direction or if he's going to the right. He's going to do the same thing. Inside arm straight. His elbows up on the outside here, sitting on that outside edge of the seat. Okay. You'll notice what Scooter's doing when he's doing that is he's actually pivoting the motorcycle underneath him. He's taking the handlebars. And he's pushing that gas cap down to his knees. He's actually pivoting the motorcycle underneath him. 
Okay, he's not stuck right in the middle of the center of the seat, trying to lean the thing over, keeping his body straight. He's pivoting the motorcycle underneath him. The American Nicky Hayden for the very first time in his MotoGP career. Unbelievably, Nicky Hayden put an astonishing pass on Toru Ikawa. And just to prove it wasn't a fluke on the last lap, Nicky did it again, this time to Sepe Gibernau. Danny's really blew up. I mean, obviously, it's cool to see an ex racer to find something that helps give back to the sport and help young kids. And uh, my cousins went to it or at flat tracking now. So I definitely recommend it to people. And, uh, you know, Danny and Scooter, I really like Scooter too. He's always fun to ride with. You know, I think just being there with the other riders and also his instructors just pushing you. And I think right around in your backyard by yourself, sure, it's, it's good. But I think anytime you can go somewhere and watch other guys do it and follow other people and just be pushed, I mean, that's the only way you're ever going to get better is trying to find the limits. Danny gets on me about having my elbows down. I, I try to tell him I'm a road racer now, so it's okay for me to put my elbows down, but he knows it's kind of a weak excuse, and I'm still a dirt tracker, so I should get my elbows up. You've got to have your elbows up. If you've been riding with us for the last two days, you know you're going to get really tired doing this, but you just got to make yourself do it. Your elbows here. This is where the control is. This is where the leverage is with this thing. If you've been riding in the mud, you know that's what's going to save your butt from getting all muddy and doing those little mud angels. Elbows up. This is where the control is. If you ride a street bike your whole life, that's where your arms are. That's great if you live in a perfect world. You never have a problem. You're always riding around in perfect conditions. But as soon as something happens exciting, as soon as the thing gets a little sideways underneath you, you hit some bad spot on the road, what other scenarios, that's where your elbows have to be. The leverage is with your elbows up. You go into the corner, you've got your inside elbow bent, you're going to lean in with it. And pretty soon, gravity's going to take over, and boom. It's a hard thing to do, but you got to make yourself do it. Most of that is in just where you grip the handlebars, okay? If you're a street rider and you grip the handlebars underneath like that, there's no way you're going to be able to get your elbows up. It's just not going to happen. As soon as he turns that throttle, that, his hand's going down and he's done, all right? So if you just reach, watch Scooter, he just reaches over the top, just reaches over the top a little bit. That's where you want to hold on to the handlebars, on top of them, okay? A real important thing in any kind of riding that you're doing is vision. You always go where you look. If a car pulls out in front of you, somebody falls down in front of you on the racetrack and you look at them, okay, that's where you're going to go. You're going to run right into them. If all you're doing is looking over your front fender right out there on the ground the whole time trying to get around the track, you can't see what's in front of you, you can't see any obstacles, you can't see if somebody's falling down, anything. You got to have your head up. You got to look as far ahead as you possibly can. As you go into the corner, you can look clean around the corner through the corner into the track. Now this is a dirt track technique we've been trying to teach you, and I say trying, for the last two days. Okay, <laughs> So you may not remember where your foot's supposed to be, because you've seen all those dirt track videos or tapes or photos, and you know, it looks like their legs stuck clear out there. Your foot's just going to go just in front of the foot peg, just in front of the foot peg, just off to the side, 